When propofol hits your brain, neural activity across the cerebral cortex begins to shut down. Synapses that were firing in complex patterns very quickly go silent. It's not just that you lose awareness of your surroundings, it's that your brain stops processing the world altogether. Meanwhile, your body's reflexes, which are meant to protect you, also go offline. Your tongue relaxes, your airway collapses slightly, and your breathing muscles are weakened. For a healthy young person, that might be fine for a few seconds or even a few minutes. But for an older person or someone with sleep apnea or obesity or a difficult airway, those seconds can mean the difference between a smooth intubation and a full-blown emergency. That's why anesthesiologists have an almost obsessive preoccupation with the airway. We plan backups for our backups. We have video laryngoscopes, fiber optic scopes, ambu bags, laryngeal masks, and a hundred other things. We're like magicians with a bag full of tricks. Because when you push those induction drugs, you are committed. There's no undo button. And this is the paradox of anesthesia. You're creating a controlled instability for like a minute so that your surgeon can perform a much more controlled surgery. Remember, before anesthesia, surgery was just a race against time because the patient was usually awake and screaming in pain. So that controlled instability during induction is something that most people agree is worth the risk, especially when performed by trained airway professionals.